Barbados. Sir, you have the microphone. Good evening, Barbados. Thanks very much, Liz and um, colleagues, Dr. Walcott and Dr. Sue. Uh, I'm happy to be able to address you briefly this evening on something that I know you would have been quite curious about. Let me begin by saying that the protocols that we are putting in place, the directive that we're putting in place, draws significantly from our experiences last year. Last year, you'll know that that was the first time that we've ever had to take our country into a period of shutdown. And a lot of it was new to us. Uh, fortunately, um, we've, I don't think that we've, we've, we've made any huge errors, uh, but certainly we've learned from some of the missteps that we may have made on the last occasion. And we've tried in many ways to tighten up, but also to allow flexibility in circumstances where flexibility is, is required. Much of what I'm going to talk about is familiar. Um, and much of it is also intuitive. So for example, in a period of shutdown, we want Barbadians to stay at home. That is the overriding principle. And that for us is the overriding objective. Barbadians are to stay at home simply because interaction and heightened interaction increases the risk of the spread of the virus. And that is where this directive is intended to take us. But obviously, in asking Barbadians to stay at home, uh, we do need to make provision for certain things to continue as per usual. And we've called those things essential services. Essential services are doctors, the fire service, police officers, paramedics, um, security officers, and a whole raft of things which, when you think about it, the country could not function on a day-to-day -day basis without. So during this period of lockdown, um, there's a blanket stay-at-home requirement, but we begin by saying that essential services are allowed to, and indeed expected to operate as normal. Nobody would want to turn up at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital or at the doctor's office in here that they couldn't have access to medical attention because of a shutdown and those individuals could therefore not attend their place of work. Nobody would want to know that they could call the fire department and hear that it was closed because those individuals were at home during this lockdown. So at the outset, essential services are required to attend their place of work. Essential services therefore includes things like telecommunications, electricity, water, those things that are necessary for our day-to-day -day existence and survival. But it's also obvious that we needed to add to that suite of, of operators another set of individuals who are going to be allowed to operate again so that Barbadians can, even though we're fighting COVID, have some level of basic normalcy to our existence. And therefore, um, we began by asking ourselves, what are those fundamental things that Barbadians need to have access to? Obviously, farmers need to operate because they have livestock to attend to. They have crops in the field. And the notion of a farmer leaving his livestock for two weeks or leaving his crops unattended for two weeks is, is really not something that we could countenance, not just because of its economic loss, but also because we rely on those things to sustain us, to feed us. So there are certain things that are going to be allowed to happen. Um, I'm reluctant to go through the full list with you, but I think it would be important for me to do so. And I believe that, that we have it, that we can put on the screen at some point in time during the afternoon's proceedings. Um, but before I get into that, let me put to rest the notion that on the 1st and 2nd of February, there's going to be the wild, wild west in Barbados, simply because some people believe that there is going to be no effective directive. That has never been the case, and it is not going to be the case. Um, it is because of, of, well, there are certain reasons why we chose to, to implement these particular measures from the 3rd of February, but the current directive all of the regime under which Barbadians are currently 
living and existing, these directives are going to continue for the first and for the second of February. So for those people who seem to think that on the first of, and second of February, there are no protocols, you can go where you like, you can do what you like, that is obviously not on. On the first and second of February, the current regime will continue. But from the third of February, we will now we will then have the new the new directives. Now, as I said, much of it is is familiar to you. So during the last shutdown, um, we kept bakeries, bread depots, and things of that sort open. That will continue on this occasion. So I can say to you that bakeries and bread depots for the sale of bread will be allowed to be open from the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. And bakeries for the baking of bread, which is to be distinguished from the selling of bread, will be allowed to operate from 9 a.m. to, f sorry, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Conscious of the fact that there are certain financial arrangements that have to continue, um, we are going to allow banks and credit unions for the first part of this shutdown, and that is to say from the 3rd of February to the 10th of February, to provide back office services. In other words, they can provide those things that support credit cards, ATM, electronic payroll, night deposits, and things of that sort. But what they cannot do is engage in face-to-face -face retail banking. So from the 3rd to the 10th, banks and credit unions in Barbados will not be allowed to do things which require face-to-face -face interaction with members of the public. They're going to be able to do all of the background, back office supporting services, but not face-to-face. -face. But from the 11th of February until the end of the directive, they'll be able to return to retail banking. Let me say that we've had a lot of questions. Will Western Union be able to open? The answer to that question is no. If we're stopping our banks from doing face-to-face, -face, it stands to reason that we would prevent money services like Western Union and so on um, from doing face-to-face. -face. So that is, the, you know, that, that, is, that is absolutely consistent. However, mindful of the fact that Barbadians do have bills to pay and paying your bills late results in penalties and so on, we will be permitting bill payment services such as SurePay to operate in wherever locations they exist between the hours of 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday to Friday. So your bill paying services, you'll be able to go to wherever you currently go to do your bill payments between the hours of 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday to Friday. Cleaning services will also be allowed to operate. Um, it stands to reason that institutions that are essential services, hospital clinics, and a whole variety of other facilities need to have professional cleaning, or supermarkets, and so on. Um, so we are agreeing, we are allowing cleaning services, who, which companies will be cleaning for essential services and for exempt businesses to perform those services. But in addition, we recognize that there are some places, um, commercial places, which require cleaning periodically for environmental purposes. So to the extent that that is going to be necessary, that will be allowed. Delivery services has taken on significant importance during this COVID time. Uh, we've had a lot of requests to allow online, online activity. Um, bottom line is we're closing businesses. So that's not going to happen. However, we will be allowing deliveries for the purposes of delivering groceries fruit and vegetables, and medical supplies, and they'll be able to operate between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Obviously, if supermarkets and so on are going to be allowed to open, um, people who are, who are supplying the farming trade and so on, if they're going to be allowed to open, then distribution channels are also going to have to be facilitated, and we're therefore going to allow the distributive traders for the supply of goods to essential services and businesses that are exempt to do deliveries between the hours of 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Farms will be allowed to continue to operate between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Fuel manufacturers, fuel storage facilities, and fuel distributors 
will be allowed to operate for the entire day. And when we say for the entire day, we are really talking about 24-7. Gasoline stations presented some challenges for us on the last occasion. And um, we are mindful of the importance of gasoline stations to keeping Barbadians on the road. But equally, we want to make sure that we eliminate that side of gas stations that encourages people to congregate and so on. So we'll be allowing gas stations to open for the sale of products relating to motor vehicles, petroleum products, including LPG, we call it bottle gas. And we'll also be able to engage in the sale of top-ups for mobile phones and pharmaceuticals. Every gas station has aspirin, Panadol, inhalers and things of that sort. So you will be allowed to buy those. But gas stations will not be allowed to sell items for human consumption, including intoxicating liquor, other than the pharmaceuticals that we just spoke about. So in other words, you will no longer be able to pop into the automart for hot dogs, hamburgers, juices, beer, and things of that sort, bread, and so on. Once again, we'll be allowing hotels, villas, and other rental accommodations to operate but they will not be allowed to operate gaming rooms, spas, gyms, discos, and, and those kinds of ancillary things for the entertainment and satisfaction of their guests. Um, they'll be operating at a bare bones level, and in this instance, this is the only occasion where we will be allowing restaurants to open. That question has come fast and furious. Will restaurants be able to open? The simple answer is no. Restaurants will not be able to open for delivery, for curbside, for takeaway, for any purpose. However, if those restaurants are situated within a hotel or something of that sort, they will be allowed to operate for the purposes of room service only. So we'll have no in-restaurant dining, as people have asked if they could facilitate. Restaurants are open in hotels for room service only. The manufacturing sector is important to us and we will therefore be allowing manufacturing companies for the provision that are, that are producing goods for export to operate. We will also be allowing manufacturing companies uh, that manufacture animal feed to operate. Pharmaceutical manufacturers, manufacturers of beverages, dairy products, food processors and food distributors they'll be able to operate within the hours of 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Pharmacies for personal shopping and the filling of prescriptions, they'll be able to operate within the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Now, the question of mini marts has come up. Uh, you will be aware that we've taken the decision that we will not be allowing any rum shops, village shops, corner shops to open. We understand the importance of these facilities com to communities. But at this point in time, we're asking Barbadians to bear with us for this very, very narrow window for the benefit of the health of all concerned. But mindful of the fact that many communities in Barbados are served only by mini marts, and mindful of the fact that in many areas, especially rural Barbados, we don't have supermarkets available we feel it is important to allow some mini marts to operate. If they don't operate, and I, I speak about St. Joseph, that's the place I represent, that's the constituency I represent, um, the St. Joseph people will then have to journey to the north, to Jordans, or down to Warrens, or south to, to, to Emerald City, and all that will do is put more Barbadians on the road at a time when we're reducing, when we want to reduce the numbers of Barbadians on the road, generally speaking. And therefore, um, the Cabinet Subcommittee has agreed that certain mini marts in rural Barbados will be allowed to operate. Of course, the question you'll be asking is, what are those mini marts? Um, we've been engaged in a significant amount of consultation over the last two days in order to be able to refine that list um, so that we're not unfair to any districts. And to be, fa to be frank, there are some mini marts that will not be allowed to open. Um, it's not a perfect situation. Minister Simmons said yesterday, the Prime Minister said a few days ago, there will be some inconvenience to people. Um, we're trying to be as fair and as balanced as we can be. 
And therefore, if you have four mini marts in one community, it would be reckless of us to allow all four to open. So in those instances, we have to try to find a way to select the one that benefits the largest, the largest number of people. Um, we expect that that list will be available for publication possibly tomorrow, no later than Monday, so that people will know which mini-marts will be allowed to open. If your mini-mart is not on that list, if the mini-mart in your community is not on that list, it has to remain closed. Private veterinary services will be allowed to operate as needed. Sugar factories will be allowed to operate for the entire day. Supermarkets will be allowed to operate between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. And I should make it clear here that mini marts will operate on the same terms. Those mini marts that are allowed to open will operate on the same terms as the supermarkets. That is to say, mini marts 8 to 4, supermarkets 8 to 4. Um, mindful of the challenges of closing places with pools at this point in time, and mindful also of the significant threat of dengue, and the Prime Minister has made it clear that at this point in time, we're not just battling COVID, but we're also battling dengue. We're going to allow swimming pool services so that those swimming pools can be kept clean and are not allowed to stagnate over the next two periods. I'm informed that swimming pools, if not attended to, can stagnate very quickly, and we want to make sure that there's no opportunity for the growth of mosquitoes, and therefore, We'll be allowing swimming pools to be clean, not for the benefit of, of individuals who own those pools, but purely for the purpose of ensuring that we keep the larvae and mosquito population down. On the last occasion, tire shops and so on became a, a pressing issue, and um, the, while they were closed in the early state of the last shutdown, we've taken the decision to allow tire shops, record services, and emergency personnel for vehicle response only to be able to operate as needed. So if you have a flat tire, you can get it fixed. If you're broken down on the road, you can call a wrecker. If you need, if you get into an accident and you need to call the emergency personnel from your insurance company, you can do that, um, but only in those circumstances. Um, wholesalers of food items and associated supplies, uh, for the limited purpose of fulfilling orders, they'll be able to operate between the hours of 8 and 3. What I want to make clear is that even though the government has taken a decision to give certain exemptions, we'll be expecting every enterprise that has been given the benefit or the privilege of an exemption, we'll be expecting them to operate on a skeleton staff to the smallest amount that is safe. So if we've given you an opportunity to operate and you normally have 200 members of staff, we're not going to agree that you can bring out all 200. But if you can operate your operate your, your business safely on 50, at a time like this, we're expecting that you will oblige us and you will cooperate with us by bringing out the smallest number of people that can run your business safely. Let me make it clear that while we're closing businesses, any enterprise that is able to have its, pers its staff members work from home, you'll be allowed to function. So lawyers, accountants, other service providers, if you can operate from home without having to interface with the, pub, with the public, without having to leave your home, you will be able to operate. The question of maids has come up time and time again. And I want to make it clear. Maids for residential properties and nannies and things of that sort, gardeners and things of that sort, that will not be permitted. As inconvenient as it may be, this is important to safeguard the health of all Barbadians. So you will not be allowed to bring your domestic worker into work. You'll not be allowed to bring your maid into work. You'll not be allowed to bring your nanny into work. You'll not be allowed to bring your gardener and other personal, um, personal um, providers of that sort. They will simply not be operated. Finally, let me say, well, perhaps not finally, um, we've, we've had questions about what happens with churches and so on. This is not unfamiliar to you. Uh, once more, we're going back to the situation where um, churches, um, available churches can stream their, right, well, religious uh, bodies can do their streaming um, as and when they have services set, 10 people. 
10 people for streaming, 10 mourners for funerals, the bride and groom in the case of a wedding, and with them, as is required by law, two witnesses and the officiant. So this was how it was um, last year, so it's not unfamiliar to you. Unlike our, in like the current situation, you will not be allowed during this shutdown to ask for additional mourners. Um, that is simply not on. So you're limited to 10 mourners, plus the funeral director, the officiant, and staff. In the case of a wedding, the bride and groom, two witnesses, and the officiant. In the case of a regular church service, a regular religious service, sim just 10 people for the purposes of streaming. In relation to exercise and beaches, we've had many calls about this. Let me reiterate that beaches and parks will be open between the hours of 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. You have a three hour window, 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. Those beaches and parks are open for the purposes of exercise only. So you can go to a beach and park or park to swim to dive, to run up and down, as you wish. But the window is 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. And that, that's all, there, there's, no, there's no second set later in the day. Many Barbadians, though, want to exercise outside of a beach or parking arrangement, beach or park arrangement, and therefore we're allowing no more than groups of two during that same window, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m to be able to exercise. So if you're accustomed doing your jogging or whatever it is, you can do that 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. But let's make it clear that the stipulation in this instance is that you must be in a group of no more than two persons. So two people can go jogging in the morning. In every instance, you're required to be physically distanced. Perhaps the most draconian thing that we've had to grapple with here is what we do about wearing face masks in public places. Um, I think Barbadians will recognize that there are a number of places. Um, I can say to you that the COVID unit had to do a cleanup of, of Fairchild Street yesterday, simply because of the large number of people who were gathered in that district, um, uh, liming, socializing, buying drinks, waiting until, until transportation came to get home, and not wear masks. This is a, is a huge problem. And therefore, we are for the first time stipulating that if you are in a public place, you must wear a mask. Now, this is what pertains in other jurisdictions, and it is, we've been loath to come to that, but we feel that we, we are now at the position where it is, it is the appropriate time to make that stipulation. So as long as you leave your home, you're going to be required to wear a mask. As long as you leave your home, you'll be required to wear a mask. Obviously, though, there are going to be some exceptions. And those exceptions are perhaps quite obvious. There are people who can't wear a mask or a face shield or any kind of face covering because of some medical condition. That medical condition may be mental, physical, or it may be some other kind of disability. In that instance, you'll be permitted not to wear a mask. If you are traveling with another person and that person has to do lip reading, then you will not have to wear a mask. Where you are eating, drinking, or taking medication, or exercising, you'll not be required to wear a mask. If a person, when you enter a building, asks you to take your mask down for the purpose of establishing your identity, you wouldn't have to wear it then either. But other than those limited situations where it's medically required or where you're eating, drinking, or taking medication or exercising, as long as you leave your home, you'll be required to wear your mask. Many of the same protocols continue, that you're not allowed to visit any place of quarantine, um, you're not allowed to attend or host a party, a line, anything of that sort. Um, let, me step, let me say here that sporting activity is out. So unlike, unlike previous occasions when, when you could engage in some kind of sports, sporting activity is absolutely prohibited. 
um, whether it is alone sports or, or joint sports, whatever it is, sporting activity is out um, for the duration of this lockdown. Um, this directive uh, will be published in GIS and our PR team is busy working on the messaging and therefore I don't expect you to remember every word that I've said. I, I anticipate that very shortly the details of the directive will be able to be published so that you can see for yourself what is allowed. Let me just reiterate, I know I'm taking long, but let me just reiterate here. All businesses are closed. You may be the biggest insurance company in the world, the biggest law firm in the world, the biggest accounting firm in the world. You could be you could be doing every single following every single protocol. You are closed. You can work from home if you're if that's workable for you. But other than that, you are closed. The only businesses that are allowed to open, only enterprises that are allowed to function, are those that are essential services or those that I've indicated to you are exempt. Um, I hope that I'll have the opportunity to clarify any issues that might arise. I've not tried to cover everything, um, but as I said, the directive will be published so that you'll be able to see for yourselves the specifics of the directive. Liz? Thank you very much, Attorney General. Uh, just one question, please. Can you remind the public of the, this period of national pause? What are the dates? The dates are from the 3rd to the 17th. And I, I, I had a, an interesting discussion today, so let me make it clear. We, when we say the 3rd, we mean all day on the 3rd. When we say the 17th, we mean all day on the 17th. So what that means is that from from the moment the 2nd of February ends, whether you say it ends at midnight or a minute past midnight, doesn't matter, but from the moment the 2nd of February ends, the 3rd of February begins. I know it, it may seem like a, like a trite statement, but I think it's more important to make it. So from the, the 1st, 2nd, and the 3rd of December, uh, third, sorry, the 3rd of February, these curfew and other provisions come into effect. And they end on the last second of the 17th of February. So from the first moment the 3rd of February begins to the last moment that the 17th of February exists.